one of the most amazingly liberating things about composition is you're not tied into a tempo, you're not tied into a genre, you're just tied into what music can actually do, what emotions you can actually channel just using notes and chords. It's such a challenge to capture big emotions when you just sit down at a piano or sit down with a guitar in your hand and be like, how do I capture this, this, this emotion or this moment in this person's life with just music? I'm Fink, I'm a writer, composer, guitarist, singer, and uh, welcome to my studio. When we approached this Spitfire Audio mission, we wanted to um, make something useful for people to genuinely use in their compositions and in their, when they're songwriting, or if they wanted to add some flavors to their sort of um, instrumental works. But I also wanted to retain and capture the kind of things that make my sound like my sound and as I've never had any classical training or any guitar lessons or I can't read or write music a lot of the techniques and bits and pieces are like unique to me because I've, I've taught myself how to do it. I play each string each note like a thumb pluck like a that kind of thing I play it with like a, a normal pluck and a downstroke and a mute. We also captured all the squeaks, all the rattles. We then went into sort of basic mini chords. So if you wanted to play something like... We've given you all of the... all of the chords all of the nuances, all of the all of the different sorts of signature playing techniques are represented. So you get a real spread depending on what you want. If you want woody or you want worn out or you want, you know, sort of nylon classical type playing. Each guitar has its own personality and it reacts and reflects these techniques like in a completely different way. So the first guitar we're going to talk about is this beautiful Martin D28. It's called the Orwell because it's a 1984. And it's just, as a vintage guitar, it's just grown and grown and grown. And it's just, it's just a beautiful guitar. It's just got a gorgeous tone. It's just beautiful, it just wafts class. So second up, we've got this wondrous looking beast. It's a D35 Martin, factory made, I think probably in the noughties. This is a hard believer drum head that my guitar tech, Paul Mullen backstage once put on it. And it was a sign of disrespect that I would do this to a guitar. You know, it's shocking. Why would you put a big sticker on it? If you need a guitar you don't really care about to so throw it on the EasyJet flight and hope that it arrives the other end. And that's why I bought this one. But because it's been such a warrior, it's done so many festivals and so many gigs, it's grown on me and developed so much that now it's like easily one of my favorite guitars now because we've been through so much together, so many festivals. And yeah, all the open tuning stuff from Hard Believer onwards on the Resurgam album, the Blue Innocent record, blues albums, all on this. And it's got some knocks and some scratches and some rattles. And that's just what makes it so like unique. Finally, I'm gonna show you my oldest guitar, Brady. Nylon string guitar. So all my early records were nylon. And I played nylon because it's quiet. So when you're in your bedroom, you can play guitar and no one can hear you practice. And that's why I started with nylon. And the great thing about nylon is it's also... It's a bit more percussive. This is all over the first Fink record, Biscuits for Breakfast, Distance and Time, Pretty Little Thing, Sort of Revolution. All the early nylon stuff was done on this very guitar, along with a load of big co-writes. This thing's got rattles and hums and buzzes for, for days, but it's what makes it unique, you know? It gives it this kind of unique sound because I've played it for almost 20 years, pretty roughly, and it's it responds to that. It, it, it doesn't ever want me to stop playing it, so. I played it for half an hour like this morning and it still sounds just beautiful. So yeah, the Brady, long may it, long may it go on.
We went to my friend Axel's studio, JRS, here in Berlin, and he's got like a mic closet, which is just like, you know, a bank vault. But one of the things we really wanted was to represent the fact that I reamp a lot of my acoustic guitar sounds. Actually, I reamp my voice, I reamp pretty much everything. And the amp that I normally go to is this beautiful uh, Fender Deluxe, late 60s, vintage piece of kit. The spring on it is gorgeous. So we worked out with Spitfire that we wanted this kind of slider that would allow you to go from the mic sound, which is all very real and woody and nails, and I'm like, I'm there. And slide, if you wanted to slide out of that into a more reamped sound. So we did the whole pack, while at the same time we had this amp in an isolated room recording everything as well. And I think it's even sat on that skateboard, which is a crucial part of the sound, obviously. We also wanted to get down all the percussion that I often often use my guitars for. And I was really inspired by artists like John Martin that would kind of get percussive with their sort of folky vibes. A lot of my demos start with the syncopated or even like a kind of... Um, that kind of stuff. And you can blend into these beats, you know. We've also just recorded loops and, and a bunch of sort of, you know, signature arpeggios and signature sort of beatscapes that I do. Part of this signature sounds is what I can do and what I do in the studio with, with my voice and tried to capture the entire range. So we went as low as I could go and we went as high as I could possibly go. We recorded all the oohs and ahs and ums that I often use as my kind of melodic beds in the tracks and productions that I work with in order for you to grab a kind of ambience that comes with a Fink production. Maybe it'll kick off some inspiration for some melodies for you if you put some of these in the mix. All the notes are recorded sort of super soft, medium and hard, so you get this range going through. You can really get emotional, you can really pull pull the emotion out of these uh, these settings. Let's try um, like something more like a plucked note from the Orwell this time. Stick a bunch of uh, amp on it. Yeah, I mean, you can hear the fret buzz on that one when I really push it. Another thing we put into the program was the start point where we wanted to, in order to maybe just you want to use some of the harmonics on the trails at the end of some of these notes to build a kind of um, like a, almost like a synth. It turns in some kind of ethereal kind of synthy vibes and you can do that with practically every patch. Also included are the full kits for you. I don't even know what that is. Then some like vocals. actually sung that low <laughs> and then a few bits and pieces like uh like fender Rhodes patch i do this thing where i hit the note and then i flash the flash the volume up so you just get the you just get a pad sound and then i've generated it through my space echo
with Spitfire, we've kind of created a bunch of tools that enable you to play with the sounds enough that maybe you'll be able to really quickly feel an ownership. Like a lot of these packs, sometimes you feel like you're just stealing someone else's sounds. But with this pack, you get the facilities to really create new sounds. We saw as a really interesting sort of win because we really wanted to make it a pack that people could be creative with the pack, not just be creative with the pack. See what I did there. So I can't wait to hear what other people do with this. I loved making it and it was really interesting for me to unpack what made my sound mine, you know, and go through that theoretical and intellectual process of being like, okay, what is your signature sound? That in itself was such a journey. So I cannot wait to hear what other people do with it. Already from the early demos I've heard, it's such a head spin to hear yourself played by somebody else. It's totally weird. So yeah, I can't wait to hear what happens. Good luck playing with it. Good luck exploring it. And I can't wait to hear me back. It's going to be great. Good times.